In this demo, we will illustrate the operations of a built-in RAM chip. So to do so, I'm going to my Tools folder and my built-in chips folder, and I will look for some uh, RAM chip, of which I have a few. And uh, let's see, let's take the RAM 64 chip and load it. As you see, this chip has um, a side effect, a visual side effect, which we see here. I can scroll this window down. It shows me what, uh, uh, what exists inside this uh, RAM chip, uh, so to speak. And uh, I can play with every one of these uh, locations, write some values into them, read values from them, as I will now proceed to show. So let us write the number 400 into location 3. In order to do so, I go to my in input and I set it to the value that I want to run. I'm sorry, I want to uh, write. I set the load bit to 1 to enable the write operation. And I set the address value to the number 3 because I want to affect location number 3. Now, if we look at the RAM, we see that nothing happened. And nothing happened because I haven't ran the clock yet. In order to write something, I have to run at least one cycle. So I will do so. I will run one cycle forward. And indeed, you see that the RAM committed to its new state. And the RAM also outputs now the last value that I entered into it. So let us now enter a few more values. I will write uh, 5,000 in uh, location, uh, say, uh, 6, running the clock. I will write uh, the value minus 12 in location uh, 5, running the clock. And you got the idea. Now, notice that as I run the clock forward, and uh, the clock now progresses uh, infinitely, 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on, until I will stop it, notice that as the clock progresses, the RAM maintains its state, which is exactly what we expect a memory unit to do, right? That's the whole idea of being a RAM device. All right, let's uh, read some values from the RAM. And uh, I will stop the clock to enable my interaction with, uh, with this unit. And let's say that I want to read what I have in address 3. So in order to do so, I will put the number 3 in the address input. And now, if I will carelessly move the clock forward, notice what will happen to address 3. It will be written by mistake with a value minus 12. And this happened because the load bit was still asserted. So first of all, let's, let's fix the situation. I think we had uh, 400 there, but I'm not sure. Whatever it was, let's, let's write it again and run the clock forward. Okay, so now we brought it back to what it was before. And the lesson here is that you should make sure to always deassert the load bit after you do a write operation. Because when the load bit is asserted, the RAM is always at the peril of, of changing it without uh, uh, wanting to do so, right, inadvertently. So once you're done writing something, set the load bit back to zero, and now the RAM is protected. It doesn't matter what you enter, you will never be able to change the state of the RAM when the load bit is zero. So in particular, if you want to read a, uh, some address, let's say address 6, I can now go to address 6, and to the address uh, pin, change it to 6, run the clock, and as you see, uh, the, uh, the RAM uh, emits the value of 5000, which happens to be 
the value of address 6. If we now want to see the value of address uh, uh, 5, we will change address to 5, run the clock, and we'll see that the address uh, uh, contains the value minus 12. So this has been a quick and hopefully effective demonstration of how a RAM device operates.